sketch a graph of the hyperbola whose equation is x minus 1 quantity squared over 9 minus y plus 1 quantity squared over 4 equals 1. First, let's take a look at the standard form of a hyperbola. If you have x minus h quantity squared over a squared minus y minus k quantity squared over b squared equals 1. Note this minus sign. If it were a plus sign, it would look like an ellipse, but we have a minus sign. We have the center at hk. So I'm going to just sketch the hyperbola. The center would be right here at hk. Now normally you would find the center first before you sketch the hyperbola. But we've got this uh, hk. It sounds familiar to a circle and an, and an ellipse that the circle center and the hyperbola center is at hk. This a, that is the value that is squared underneath the x, is the distance left or right, so in the x direction. And that's good. That's going to become important in the next example when I reverse this, say y minus x. So that is uh, a, the distance left or right from the center is a. This b then is the distance up or down from the center, or that is the number that is squared, that is below y, is b. Or is the distance up or down. And what that does is that traces or gives the dimensions of this box or rectangle. And then you draw these, these nice uh, diagonals, asymptotes is what they really are. And all these other colors are not part of the graph. They're just guidelines. And then orange would be the graph. So if it's x minus y, or x minus h quantity squared, and then minus y minus k quantity squared, it opens left and right. Now, if, on the other hand, we have quantity y minus k squared, notice that the k sticks with the y. All right, that's, that becomes important. And now, in the denominator, some books you'll see an a squared, some books you'll see a b squared here. I'm going to put b squared just to stay consistent, that say, to let us know that um, whatever is under the y, whatever is squared under the y, goes up or down. Uh, but you might see it in other books uh, called an a. It doesn't change anything. It just means that in that book they're calling it an a. It still goes up and down from, from the center. If it's under y, it goes up and down from the center. That is when you're drawing the box. So now we have minus uh, x minus h quantity squared. Again, this h stays with the x over a squared equals 1. Now, because it's y minus x, or, or the y term minus the x term, then we're going to say that this opens up or down, like this. This is what the hyperbola looks like. Now, it might be narrow, it might be wide, but what I've got there is looks like two opposing um, parabola. Okay. We've got the center at hk again. So recognize that the h is with the x. Center is at hk. The distance up or down is b. And I'll use yellow there, just like I did in the last one. So up or down is b. That is whatever is squared underneath the y is b, is up or down, and whatever is underneath the x and squared is the left or right. Whether they call it an a or a b, it goes left or right. And that sketches out this imaginary rectangle. And from that rectangle, then, you draw these this diagonal that make, gives you the asymptotes. And that gives you the, the shape of the, of the hyperbola. OK, let's do it now with this example. We've got x minus y, x minus h, but the x 
the term comes first. So we know that this is going to open left to right. I'm going to write it in this form with the y minus something. So let's do that. I'm going to put this in green. So I'll write x minus 1 quantity squared over 3 is what's being squared there. Minus y minus a negative 1 quantity squared over 2 squared equals 1. And I write it like that just so we can just pick these things off. So the center, the center is at hk. So this is our h is 1 and our k is negative 1. Rem remember k stays with the y and h stays with the x. So we've got a center at 1, negative 1 because we've got it in this form. The minus sign is in the, in the form of the hyperbola. So we just pick out the 1 and the negative 1. Okay, enough. Talk about that. Let's put it down. 1, negative 1. Here's the center. I'm going to ultimately draw the hyperbola in green. So all this, all this other color will not be part of the graph. Just guidelines. Now we've got uh, A equals 3 and B equals 2. Remember, whatever's under X goes left or right. So I've got 3 units to the left and to the right of that center. And I've got two units up or down from that center. And that's going to sketch this little rectangle. And then you draw diagonals through that rectangle. And you can kind of pay attention to this slope. It's up two to the right three. And some books emphasize that. And that's fine. That's, that's a great thing to emphasize what the slope is. And here we've got the same slope, but we're going l uh, right to left. And now the opposite slope, so um, down 2 to the right 3. So we sketch those diagonals. Now we're ready. Now we've got this. It's kind of like painting. You do all this prep work of the, the uh, taping and all this stuff and scraping. And then the painting, that's fast. We know this opens left, uh, left and right because the X comes first. So we have our ends right there. And these orange lines are asymptotes. So we won't cross those, but we will get very close to those. And... Now we've got this other part of the per of the hyperbola going in this direction. It doesn't touch the asymptotes. It just gets very close. So there we go. I just wanted to... It's not jagged like that. I'm just trying to draw it without it being uh, too many angles. Okay. There you go. That is an example of sketching the graph of a hyperbola with the standard form.